Warning, this stream is rated for mature audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello, how are you all doing? Let's see if we get this thing going here. There we go. What's happening? Are we having fun yet? Um, let's see here. Oh, that looks a little low. Let's bring that up a little bit here. Hmm. <laughs> There, that's a little bit better. Maybe even a little bit more here. Let's see here. <laughs> there, that's good. <clears throat> good evening. How are you all doing? Let's see, we, we had uh, Legion Cage and Selamu, also known as Dio. Uh, a couple of Lurkers. Anyway, welcome. I'm uh, I'm nursing my thumb that I was chopping vegetables a little bit ago, and uh, of course the the obligatory <clears throat> gotta slice off uh, a little bit of the end of my thumb to add protein to the food. Uh, without it, I don't know what I would do. So, uh, welcome and. Uh, this is going to be very chill. In fact, I forgot one thing here. Let me make sure I get this going here. Mm -hmm. yeah, let's see here. There. A little bit of that. There we go. Oh, <laughs> You don't gotta worry about that. I do it all the time. All the time. Anyway, uh, yeah. But, uh, nice chill little stream here. We got some good music in the background, a nice fire to sit by. Uh, what's on the fire? Um,. Well, I'm sure we've got some uh, dollar store hot dogs and some uh, chemical marshmallows. Uh, perhaps, perhaps, uh, uh, like one of those little uh, weenie sausages um, that we could put on the end of the stick and, and, you know, forget it's in the fire until it's completely burned uh, to a crisp. Um, I, like, I like my little weenies crispy here. But, uh, I don't know, just, um, enjoying the fall, um, 
it's uh, of course my favorite time of year. Apples. I never thought of apples. That's that's a good idea. Um, and and even though I love to um, like sit outside by the fire, it also is like a thing I've got to be in the mood for. Um, just to you know be comfortable outside and, and sit there and you know get get exactly the right distance from the fire and you know, not be in the way of the smoke uh, you know and of course you can't do it in, in higher winds properly and I don't know I'm I'm kind of asinine about that sort of thing the uh, <coughs> um, the uh, OCD part of me you know, it's like I really got to be in the mood for that sort of thing to set up a fire outside. Um, I'd probably be just as happy with like a, a a gas fireplace inside or something like that. Yeah, especially when you put them together, hot dogs with uh, chemical marshmallows topping. You know. Anyway, so uh, we are full hilt into the fall. Yeah, I mean, I'm already starting to see the, the indications of winter here, including uh, going to uh, Dunkin' Donuts this morning. Was it this morning? Let me turn that down a bit here. There we go. Just a little bits in the background. There we go. That's good. Something like that. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I went to Dunkin' Donuts this morning, and um, they were already in full force pushing the Christmas drinks. You know, the, the peppermint and the <clears throat> uh, whatever holiday flavors that they came up with. I mean, the pumpkin spice is still there, but um, the uh, they're already pushing the candy canes and whatever else, and I'm sure uh, you know, the the Christmas presents are already being bought and sold and, and traded on eBay and taken back to the store because we forgot batteries or something like that. Kids screamed and broke it. Yes, it's already Christmas. My uh, good friend sent to me, uh, because I had mentioned that I was uh, playing Nosferatu on November 1st, and she laughed and said, Halloween's over, it's Christmas time. I said, no, no, there, there's another holiday in there, and, and uh, thanks, oh no, you get out, get out, I need that meme that said, get out. No, um, I said, no, there's, there's Thanksgiving in the middle, okay? From now until November 26th, it is Thanksgiving time, and then on November 27th, then we can move into Christmas time, and not a minute before that. I don't care what the commercialism has <laughs> wrought to the holiday season, but, uh, yeah, no. I'm not buying it. And yes, yes, I can agree that Halloween does last all year. Uh, you know, when it, especially when it comes to movies. There's never a, a good... Uh, how do I say that? Never a bad time for Halloween movies or, or scary movies. Except for Christmas Day. And on Christmas Day, it's 24 hours of a Christmas story. Starting uh, Peter Billingsley. Yeah. <clears throat> That's the only time uh, Halloween movies are not acceptable. Even then, uh, I you you have a crossover Nightmare Before Christmas. You've got um, you know a couple of the the slasher Christmas movies. And, and uh, what was that? Um, oh, what was that uh, horror uh, Christmas movie about uh, like Santa Claus being a monster? I can't remember. Something along those lines, uh, but it's been a while since I've seen it, probably 20 years. So last year, I remember seeing an Xmas ad in June. Yes, 
Yes. I mean, they'll... They'll, uh... They'll put it, uh... As far back as they possibly can just to get more money out of what they consider the Christmas season. Um, somebody just announced that they were going to be closed on Thanksgiving. I can't remember who they were talking about being on the, on the radio. Their store was going to be closed on Thanksgiving. And I'm just like, yeah, we need more of that. I mean, it's is it too much to ask that... Uh, stores not necessarily be open on a specific day or or at the same time I mean the whole reason why stores have been open in, on Thanksgiving in the last 20 25 years is because you have Black Friday the day after Thanksgiving and they're like oh okay well we're gonna open up earlier and earlier uh, you know 8 a.m. 6 a.m. 4 a.m. Then they're open 24 hours, and then the hot deals start at 6 p.m. on Thanksgiving, and it's like, give it a frickin' rest, why wouldn't you? I mean, I understand, you know, the, a lot of the stores depend on the, the Black Friday and the holiday shopping income, but jeez. And at Walmart, it's absolutely ridiculous. I will never step foot in if my life depended on me being in a Walmart on Black Friday, any time between Thursday at 4 p.m. and Friday at midnight, <clears throat> I'm going to die. Because I will never, ever step foot in a Walmart during Black Friday shopping again for the rest of my life. Never. It's not worth it. I did it once. <laughs> And that was, what, eight years ago to buy the, the TV that I have now for $80. And yeah, it was a great deal, but nope, never again. I bought some Xmas stuff for short and sweet, though. One item she will probably get this weekend. But it's not Christmas this weekend. Wait till frickin' Christmas. Yes, Christmas story is the best. And if you were not aware... The star, uh, Peter Billingsley, that plays Ralphie, um, or not Ralphie, uh, Ralphie's brother. Can't remember his name offhand. Um, he, uh, I actually saw him act first because I hadn't seen Christmas Story until like maybe 15 years ago. And before that, uh, I saw him as Dr. Phlox in Star Trek Enterprise. That was literally him 25 years later or something like that. And, uh, yeah. So I didn't even know that was him until I started uh, researching Star Trek actors. And I found out he was in a Christmas movie. And then I saw that, uh, you know, TBS, I think it was, used to... Maybe they still do run 24 straight hours of a Christmas story back to back, and uh, and I watched it one year and I absolutely love it. It's it's my favorite Christmas movie, I think. Um, right right next to or maybe tied with Die Hard. Um, Die Hard is definitely a Christmas movie. Uh, it is Christmas is not complete until Hans Gruber falls off of uh, the Nakatomi. Uh, plaza building, and that is never in dispute. <clears throat> uh, GS announced they would be open on Thanksgiving again. Oh, GameStop, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, all of the major retailers, they do it now, and it's like, no, no, no give it a rest. There was, like I said, there was somebody on the radio that announced um, that they were closing their stores for Thanksgiving, and I'm like, yeah, that, that almost makes me want to go in there and give them more business before then <clears throat> I gotta see if I can catch on the radio again who that was supposed to be one of the one of the companies in Cleveland here um, might have been Marks or it might have been um, Giant Eagle or something like that I can't remember um, yeah I like I like giving gifts too um, to some degree uh, I don't like receiving gifts 
I would rather, if you, if you want to buy me a gift, uh, you ask me what I want. Because, as a perfect example, for Christmas gifts in the last four or five years, I have received Star Trek mugs. The latest of which was a gift from my mother. Not a Christmas gift, but, you know, just a gift. And she's like, I got something for you. Ah. And I'm like, okay, what is it? And she got out the box, and it was a um, <clears throat> Star Trek mug that uh, when you fill it with hot liquid, uh, Captain Kirk appears on the transporter. And um, I'm, I'm just like... I just got rid of a couple other gift mugs, Star Trek gift mugs that were given to me in the past couple of years at Torg. I, I'm not interested in cluttering up my house with more BS that serves no purpose. <laughs> I mean, there's there's a reason why I don't have any decorations on my walls or, uh, you know, uh, most everything in my house is there because it serves some kind of purpose. And, uh... Yeah, I mean, it's like, it, it, that doesn't impress me. I thank you for your thoughtfulness and your kindness, but no, I don't want it. <laughs> Including whatever you're getting me for Christmas, Cage. I, I will not love it. I defy you in every capacity. Thank you. Good night. In any case, uh, so the, um, the Thanksgiving... Uh, season is firmly upon us. It is not Christmas yet, obviously, because uh, if it were the Christmas season, I would have a Christmas-themed uh, background, of which there were many to choose from on the interwebs of, uh, you know, fireplace settings with Christmas trees and snow outside and, you know, all that other stuff. This is definitely... Thanksgiving season, uh, the fall is still upon us. It's uh, we're we're uh, starting to get the uh, cold November rain by Guns and Roses segment of the fall, but uh, yeah, no, too early for Christmas. <clears throat> in, in the meantime, um, I think that uh, <laughs> uh, watch me. Uh, I I think that we can definitely um, say that when it comes to Christmas, uh, we will be uh, celebrating it to the fullest here on the ABC channel. Uh, Christmas happens to be the theme of the next major project that I am going to try to get rolling here real, real soon. Um, that uh, if all goes according to plan, it's going to prepare on December 19th. Um, so we have a christmas theme main event, and uh, there will be some other things, including um, the uh, um, Trans-Siberian Orchestra. I have some things, including Trans-Siberian Orchestra, and um, I, I, I do want to start doing... Movies that would not fly on Twitch um, in Discord. So I, I think maybe once a week uh, doing a movie night. Uh, like the game room has been doing Fridays um, after community game night. Uh, they'll show a, a movie in Discord and occasionally in other places. But I do want to make that a... I think a weekly thing on Discord with uh, things that would not work on Twitch. And uh, we'll see. Yeah, November Rain is one of my favorites. Um, back in the day when I was a karaoke host, I uh, if nobody else did it, I would definitely make sure that as soon as we got the first uh, rain in November, I would sing that song. But, uh, yeah. So... Uh, definitely in the uh, thrust of fall here, and uh, the leaves are changing color, at least in the uh, Midwest. Uh, I don't 
uh, get out much of the state, so I don't know how it is in other places. Uh, especially the uh, the groovy Californians, I, I don't think they have the same kind of uh, foliage that we have in the Midwest, so it's uh, maybe not quite the same uh, looking at the uh, the dead leaves all falling and uh, the various colors that come with that. But uh, in any case, um, I do have a topic of the day. Uh, and you know, maybe here and there I'm going to make a few remarks about it. Um, streaming quality and uh, putting out quality content and, and the kind of standards that we hold ourselves to when it comes to that. Um, I, uh, that topic of the day, which uh, of course is going to change any time I do a fireside chat, it was prompted by uh, another streamer who I'm not going to name, um, visibly getting upset because they were not living up to a standard that they had set upon themselves in their stream. And uh, the, the one thing uh, that, that kind of bothers me about that is I've seen so many people on Twitch that they, when they want to stream, they've got a concept in their head of how that stream is going to go. And I do the same thing. I've got a concept in my head of how my stream is going to go. Anybody that's worked with me already knows that uh, when I do a stream, I make an outline of the stream and I send it to them and I say, okay, here's how the stream is generally going to go and what we want to cover just so we make sure we're all on the same page and, and we try to curtail some of the issues that come about like... Um, you know, sound and audio issues. I try to, I try to make sure we do a sound check beforehand and make sure everything's working the way it should be. Um, you know, and just uh, all all sorts of all sorts of uh, things that um, people set up for themselves, and then when it doesn't work out, and it's always not going to work out. There's always going to be some kind of issue, something you forgot or something you weren't aware because, you know, OBS did an update or Twitch did this stupid thing over here or whatever the case may be. And um, they, they get so frustrated that they then uh, start um, blaming themselves or you know, just not knowing how to respond to that. And there's a couple of things that I want to say to that, but first we'll welcome the eminent slight of game to the room. You should not go. You, uh, you have no choice but to remain, uh, at least as far as I have anything to say about it. Uh, the, uh... <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm assuming the, the embedded joke there is uh, you may not have streaming quality, so you're uh, you're, you're just going to leave because of that? No. Sorry. Um, as I've told many people before, I don't come and, and participate or uh, lurk in people's streams because of the games that they play. I come f for those people. And, and I'm, I don't mean that in, like, a, you know, a bad manner. I, I am literally showing up in the stream because I want to see that person. Maybe, maybe not a cam, per se, but uh, I want to see their stream in action. And the, the biggest thing about that is there's so many streamers that think 
if they don't play a game well, that people don't want to come to see their stream. Or if, um, if for instance, they've got, you know, technical issues. And yes, it's frustrating and all that, but then they, they get in this mindset that uh, nobody wants to watch. Or, or people are going to leave if there are technical issues and, and uh, the, the stream isn't perfect or, or close to perfect at least. I mean, obviously, you know, everybody's got some minor issues here and there, but, you know, they, they look at it and say, oh, this isn't uh, professional enough. We're, we're going to leave the stream. No, nobody does that. And if they do do that, they're a rat ass bastard. 99.9% .9 of people do the exact same thing that I do except maybe with a slight spin and and one of the things that slight said to me is that I'm very observant and that is true I will show up in somebody's stream I watch how people interact how they talk how they respond and sometimes that that then changes how I then respond to them because uh, I'm, I'm kind of like molding myself to the situation and saying, okay, here's how this interaction should go. Most people do that. I mean, it, it, it's not uncommon. You uh, uh, And I'll give you a perfect example. Let's say you've got one streamer who is uh, family friendly and another streamer like myself that's not, okay? If you yourself uh, don't mind cursing, make it slight for the host. Yeah, I, I finally got some uh, alerts and stuff up. Um, if uh, if if you don't mind the cursing, you come into my stream and you can you can you know say fuck or shit or damn in the chat, and I don't care. I really don't. However, if you were to go into that other streamer who is family friendly and you respect them and you want to respect what they're doing, you will censor yourself. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Most people do what I do to varying degrees. They go into another person's stream and they mold themselves to interact in a positive manner. Most people. Some people don't. Some people have that toxic nature that they, they go into somebody else's stream and they'll... they'll uh, you know, feel that they have to, to make negative jokes or, uh, you know, try to put themselves above it or, you know, obviously the, the, the Hitler of, of that, uh, uh, analogy is, is hate raids and all of these stupid ass people that want to come in and just cause ruckus. But nobody that I know, I mean... I'm following a good 200 people or so, and it's safe to say that I've been in all of their streams, if they stream, at least once in the last year, because it's coming on about a year now I've been on Twitch, and nobody that I know would go into a stream and say, oh, this person is having technical issues. Or this person is failing at the game they're playing on Twitch and leave because of that. Nobody! Nobody does that. And yet, I see the other side of that analogy happen all the time. Streamers that get frustrated because they don't think they're professional enough or don't think that they're entertaining enough or not good enough at the game they're playing and therefore they they feel as if people are, are going to lose interest in their stream or uh, do something else and I'm going, no, no, nobody acts like that. It's it's just not a thing. And And for the very small percentage of people that do act like that, those are the toxic people you don't want there anyway. But the overwhelming majority of people don't act like that. And and I just don't... I, I'm sorry, I don't get people 
that gets so frustrated over not being able to put out this perfect stream every time. I have had plenty of technical issues and other things that I didn't do wrong. My Halloween special was nowhere near up to the par that I wanted it to be, simply because I didn't have the time to put in to make it more professional. I'm not tearing up about it. Oh well. <laughs> it, it just... Okay. And we move on. And and I'm just going... You know, let's, let's all just be a little more chill about it. Let's uh, take a step back, take a breather, and realize that those technical issues are going to happen. And playing a game and putting it out there for the Twitch universe to see... You're not going to always play that the way you want to, the best you want to. Um, and, and I think, I, I think uh, usually it's, um, it's, it's way over, um, overthought. I think that's the word I'm looking for. The people, uh... They put way too much thought into trying to create something. And um, I'll, I'll go into another example in just a second. But you say, because I'm well-adjusted in that area. Well, I can tell you, it, it may be because of that. But I think it's more because from day one, everything that I've done on Twitch has been with the assumption that if it doesn't work out, and, and this is kind of how I live my life too, if it doesn't work out, okay, fine, we'll do something different. But, but more along the lines of everything that I've done on Twitch has been for my own enjoyment. I've literally been selfish about it, and I don't care if I'm doing a fireside chat and there's two people in there that I'm just yakking to. Okay, I don't care if there's 200 people in there. That'd be nice. And and I've told a couple of people eventually I would like Twitch to be a, a source of income for me. But if it doesn't happen, I'm fine. I really am. I, I never looked at this as this thing where I have to be professional. I mean, that was, that was from the get-go. Me going... You know, this is this is for my entertainment value. This is this is me putting together a show that I want to do, and a few people really like it. I mean, Slight, you were just telling me about how you got on Twitch, and um, th this also uh, I think is true for uh, Angle Doom and Isnib. And that is, uh, the way you get on Twitch is, is kind of unexpected. You get on there, and you start playing some games, and then maybe you start streaming, and maybe you join a Discord or two, make a couple of connections in the community, but then the growth rate is not necessarily what you expected because you're connecting with more people than you thought. Or what you're putting out there on Twitch is appealing to more people than you thought it would. I mean, I looked at Twitch and I said, what do we not have here? I mean, there's a few people that do public domain stuff, but not many. Not many. I'm, I'm kind of niche in that regard. And again, I don't. If I put out, you know, Nosferatu or Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, whatever I'm going to come up with for public domain movie night in the future, I don't care if there's two people in the audience or 300 or, or 2 million. It might be nice at some point, but if it doesn't happen, I'm, I'm okay with that. So, I mean, yeah, in, in that. In that regard, I guess I am well-adjusted because I was well-adjusted from the beginning. I had a concept of what I thought I might want to do on Twitch, and then I developed that concept and put it all together, and then I make it happen. And, and I could be doing 
five hours a day like Isnib. He does 20 hours a week. I could be doing even two hours a day every day of the week, five days a week or seven days a week, but I'm not. And, and there's a reason behind that because, first of all, I have a full-time job. Second of all, what I want to put out on Twitch is I have to have the time to put into it what I want it to be. So, for instance, like, it took me a good, I'd say, hour and a half, 90 minutes or so, to set up just this stream. To find a good fireplace background that I liked, and I was searching through, you know, fireplaces on Google, and, um, you know, topic of the day, and setting up my chat box and my cam, and... You know, putting the scenes together for OBS, coming attractions that I do at the end of the stream, and making sure all of that information is correct. 90 minutes just for this stream, putting it together. And if I had thought, planning ahead last week, that I was not going to have time to put that together the way I wanted, I wouldn't have done it. That's all. And and, um, and I think that that also plays into some of the reasons why streamers get so frustrated is like, you know, they they feel that if people are, are subbing to them or cheering bits or gift subs or some of these other ways of support, that they, they then have a responsibility to provide the entertainment. And if they don't, you know people are going to leave or, or be pissed off or frustrated, but that, again, that's not how people work. Uh, Sky, Sky uh, Fry or Sky of Fire, uh, that he just changed his name, he was having some um, mental uh, health days, basically. He was having a rough time with his family. He took a little over a week off. And I remember him posting in his Discord, saying, I understand if you, you know, don't want to continue your subscription, you know, cancel it or that. And I'm going, <laughs> people, people don't subscribe just for the entertainment value. And I, I, and I think I'm safe in saying that not quite... Uh, or, or I, I would say most people don't subscribe for the entertainment value. They subscribe because they like that streamer and they want to support them. But, um, you know, he, he had it in his mind that because he was having an issue and he couldn't stream his normal schedule like he has for a while, that people would leave. And there it is again. There, You know, this concept that... Uh, if you're not good enough, people are going to unsubscribe or just go away. And, uh, I just don't see it. I don't see people doing that. The, the people that are there, uh, are there to support you. And, yeah, there's maybe some elements for, like, specific games. Like, I mean, obviously, people that like speedruns. And people that like Castlevania 2, and people that like Willow, and people that like the other things that, that Sathdresh regularly puts out, they're going to be on his channel. And they're going to maybe subscribe and maybe, you know, support him in other ways. But I don't think they're going to leave if he suddenly, you know, <laughs> changed and decided he was going to play Rocket League. For a couple of days or you know even a while maybe he would lose a little bit of support but i don't think so i don't think most of the people that i don't think that's how they operate on twitch based off of my observation and what i've seen so let me catch up in the uh, chat here uh reveals there is no magic <laughs> and there never was there never was i mean Maybe they, uh, maybe there are some elements 
to this world that are supernatural. I, I'm kind of undecided on that, but most of the magic that we see is very well thought out, very well practiced, very well put together, and and manipulated. That I mean, that's all magic ever was, is m manipulating elements of what you were doing, what you were presenting, to create an illusion. And most people understand that, too. Unless you're five years old, there is no magic. There's, there's only the illusion of something happening that you just don't understand, and therefore it seems magical. Uh, and that also reminds me of a, a saying that I picked up from Star Trek Next Generation, and that is any sufficiently advanced uh, society or, or being could appear godlike to somebody who's less advanced or, or a people that's less advanced. And, uh, yeah... Just because it's not something that you understand doesn't mean that it's magic, that it's some kind of, you know, uh, supernatural thing that you pull out of thin air. There is no magic. There is creating something and making it look the way you want it to look. And that's it. So... Uh, I'm good, but not quite as good as he. Even he has stopped with magic. Twitch just isn't good for magic, really. People have tried. Oh, Walsh magic? Yeah. Um, I, I follow Walsh magic, but I don't think I have seen him do uh, any tricks, any, any illusions on the screen, so... Um, I'd have to say, I don't know, but, I mean, you know, we were talking about Penn and Teller, uh, last weekend, and they put out some fantastic illusions, and, you know, I, I liked, uh, Chris Angel back in the day, I'm sure there's some others, but, uh, it's just practice, creating that illusion and then practicing the hell out of it. YouTube, yeah. You know, I'd have to see. Uh, that's not my bag. <laughs> See, they might. Trous had an issue with the change to Halo only content. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that definitely is a part of it. I mean, uh, I've gotten a couple of people that showed up, um, in the, uh, in my streams because I put in the title, you know, Public Domain Movie Night or whatever else we're doing, and uh, I had a couple of people say they found me by way of Twitch search engine. So, um, that definitely does play a part to a certain degree. Some people are there just for the game. Uh, people that search Isnib, uh, because he's been playing through the Final Fantasy series, and they're big fans of Final Fantasy. I know, I know, you know, Twitch is a gamer site primarily, and I know that plays a big part of it, but I don't think people are going to give up on a streamer they like simply because they're not currently playing a game they don't care for. I mean, there's, there's quite a few streamers that I follow that play shooters all the time, and I'm not a big fan of shooters. And uh, I'll still go in there. I, I may not actually watch the game, but I'll, you know, still interact with them and say hi and, you know, give them some of my time. You know, collect some channel points. So I'll have to see. Oh, Walsh Magic on YouTube? Yeah. I see. You are trained in the dark arts. Uh, I'll have to, I'll have to test your abilities at some point. <laughs> anyway, okay, I'll check, I'll check out Walsh's um, 
uh, YouTube at some point here when I have some time. Because uh, I do love uh, good magicians. I uh, more recently have been watching primarily just Penn and Teller fool us. But uh, and uh, I think I've seen a few of David Blaine's thing things recently. I don't even know if Chris Angel is still a thing. At least he was back in the early 2000s. A lot of practice. <laughs> a lot of practice. I mean, sleight of hand by itself is, is merely a... Uh, merely a extremely well-practiced movement of whatever you are holding to positions where you're appearing to not hold it, right? Very well practiced. Sleight of hand probably is, um, I, I would say, extremely difficult if you have not put in the time to try to you know, make it look the way it's supposed to. Which, I mean, that's that's exactly what I've been saying about Twitch, is, you know, you have to put in the time, you have to put in the practice, you have to put in the effort to make it look as good as you want it to be. I could be more professional, without a doubt. But having only really been presenting things on Twitch for the past two months, three months... Um, I'm fine with what I put out. I, I have, uh, no reservations or hesitation about that. Uh, like I said, if I don't think I'm going to have time to put the effort into it that I want to put into it, then I will not do that show. But that that's all set out long before. I mean, I've got a schedule that goes all the way into fall and winter of next year of things that I want to accomplish with my channel and yes, the, the further you go out the, the rougher it is uh, rougher plans, but I mean, I, I work on that schedule almost daily to say, okay, this is what I want to do, here's how much time I have to accomplish it, does this work with my work schedule and everything else with my household and if I don't have time for it, I'm not doing it yet. It's just, you know, on the back burner or, um, you know, in, in the uh, uh, planning stage. So, we'll move into other stuff when I'm ready, you know. And if I'm not, then, then we're just not going to do it yet. But uh, we'll see. You know, we'll see. If I, if I could eventually make enough money to live off of just Twitch streaming, that I think would be ideal in a lot of ways, but if it never happens, again, I'm okay with that, you know. So it's going to be doing something sneaky and making it look like a natural movement, yeah. Using natural things like scratching your hand, disguising, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, as Isnib would say, young Benjamin is in the house, welcome. How are you, good sir? Thank you for stopping by. Good to see you. Uh, and um, as I had stated um, earlier, I personally am going to retire Bits for Ben's Bits. Uh, it has run its course, I think. And, uh, yeah, it's time to move on. So... At least for me, you won't hear that anymore. Um, and I, I thank you for being such a good sport. I really appreciate you. Um, you know, it was fun. And that's, you know, we'll, we'll have more fun, but maybe with something different, you know. Uh, I'm good. I'm pretty decent. I, um, I had to work uh, about six hours today. Uh, didn't quite get as much done as I wanted to, but I had to go get a grocery pickup and then come home and do some food prep and uh, get ready for the stream here. And, uh, oh really? <laughs> a 
That's up to you, man. That's up to you. Um, the uh, uh, work situation in general has been kind of weird the last several months. Uh, I, and if you're you're not familiar, I uh, drive full time for Uber right now, and uh, I'm actually going to be changing it up here pretty soon. I'm going to be uh, delivering packages, at least temporarily, and then I've got uh, a couple of things that I want to apply for, and I think with the first of the year I'm going to try to get it out of Uber almost completely and uh, work a more regular job again. Uh, part of the reason why I have done full-time Uber in the last year is because my health has not been that, that great, um, and... Uh, uh, I've had a lot of issues with mobility and pain, and, uh, most of those have cleared up in the past several months. I've been working on, you know, losing weight and trying to be healthier, and, um, I just, uh, I don't want to get overwhelmed with, uh, a newer job that, um, could overwhelm me physically. So we'll, we'll see what's available. Um, I've got a couple of concepts that I want to draw out and see if eventually I can just phase Uber out to completely. And uh, we'll see how that goes. But uh, yeah. Otherwise, I'm good. Been healthy. Uh, even though my sinuses make me sound like uh, my... My nose is part of the brass section, but uh, the uh, the health has been on the rise and uh, feeling pretty decent. So, just enjoying the uh, the music and the fire and the association and presence of you fine folks. So. Let's see here. Let's just check this out here. Yeah, no, okay. <laughs> wow. Hold on, I gotta I gotta check this person out here. That's interesting. Okay then. <laughs> no. Nope. Sorry, edge isn't real. I, I apologize for the dismayal. Is that a word? Dismayal? D-I-S-M-A-Y-A-L? A-L? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not going to look it up. It is now. Yeah, there you go. I apologize for your dismayal. Mr. Slight, slightly dismayed. Um, the magic is in the forethought. The magic is in the practice. The magic is in the presentation and, and the showmanship and the uh, desire to create something that is entertaining, or, or uh, something that, uh, hmm, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, immersive. That's a good word. That's a good word for that. Something, creating something that is immersive. Immersive. Um, 
or the foreplay, which can also be immersive, but uh, it depends on who you're playing the four with and uh, who you uh, who you are putting in that position. <laughs> okay, absolutely, I look forward to that. Um, magic to me is, um, I think the wonderment of wondering how they, how they do that, like, trying to figure it out. Now, um, we're trying to, uh, as my keyboard breaks, trying to... explain what I just saw in in a comprehensible method. Well, let's open it up here. Hold on, let me, uh, hold on, let me do this here. I'm going to pause that. I'm going to pause that. And let's see. Uh, Let's do a okay, so we got that, and we're going to add that. Hold on. <laughs> Clickety click clack. Boom. Nice ad. Let's see here. That doesn't work. Hmm. Oh, now I see what I gotta do here. Interact. Uh oh. I think I broke it here. Hold on. There we go. Hold on. Is that coming through? Let me make sure that's working properly. Is that Oh no, I'm not professional. I'm doing this on the fly. There we go. Well, let's see here. Let me do one more thing. Well, let's see here. Let me do one more thing. Yeah. Let's add. Okay, you know what? We're going to do this a different way here because that's just not working. <laughs> Get rid of that. Let's go back over to this here for a moment and then let's do let's do one of these and one of these and let's do one of these
Yeah, that looks like shit, but that's, uh, that's not bad. And then we need one of these from that. There we go. Meet Editor X, the world's most advanced website design platform, made for you, the creator who sees the invisible. Your skill requires custom breakpoints to design responsive web experiences for any screen. What is magic? There I think we... magic is um, is a lot of things to a lot of people. I think to magicians, magic is mostly the emotions that a spectator feels. I think the magic lives there. What is magic for a spectator? I think it's it's almost like that feeling of walking up the stairs in the dark and you think you're at the last step and you go to take the step but there are no more steps and you're sort of you're sort of unbalanced for a second and in that split second your whole world has just shifted everything you thought was real everything you knew was a fact as sure as you're stepping on it just disappeared. I think that's magic. What's your name? Martin. Martin. Nice to meet you, Chris. What's your name again? Vincent. Vincent, could you just hold the phone? And I'll have Vincent stand over here, just like that. Perfect. Don't move. What I'm going to do, could you turn the phone on and unlock it? Yep, perfect. Leave it like that. Maybe hold it like this so everybody can see with the other hand. Perfect. Okay. Uh, Martin, I'm going to ask you just to go ahead and say stop whenever. Stop. Right there? Okay. Look at this card. You see that card? Yeah? All right, watch this. I'm going to take it. Watch. Okay. See that? Watch this. Watch. Now look, I'm going to step over here. Check this out. Completely gone. Look, I'm going to pick it out of thin air. Bam. Just like that. You see that? You see it, right? You don't see it, but let's pretend we see it. Okay. Watch this. Catch this. Come here. Come in closer. Look at the phone. Watch. Drop it right on here. <laughs> That's it, right? That's your card? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what you can do? Grab it. Sort of take it out. Take it out. Pull it out. Pull it out. Yeah. You're holding it. You see it? It's invisible, but you're holding it. Okay. Okay? Uh, what I want you to do now is just put it in your pocket. Yeah, put it in your pocket. That's it. Now take it out of your pocket. No, really. No, really, take it out of your pocket. Oh. <laughs> oh. Is that it? Make sure that matches. Yeah, that matches. Definitely. <laughs> you want to keep that? Yeah. yeah, you can keep this too. There you go, buddy. I don't want to see it show it to everybody. I'm going to make that card appear on my finger. Watch this. Ah. Okay, um, have you guys ever seen the movie The Matrix? It's a low budget movie, went to DVD a few years ago, you might be familiar with it. Um, you know The Matrix, there's this guy called Morpheus, right? And he offers these two pills to, to Neo at one point, right? The red pill and the blue pill, right? Here, just come around here, Brian. Come around the back, check this out. So, we got the blue pill and we got the red pill. Um, red pill leads you down the rabbit hole, all right? You don't come out of the red pill the same. It changes you forever. And the blue pill is something we know, something's reality, yeah. right? So this is the blue pill, it's an open deck. And we have here the red pill, which is a closed deck. Which would you like, the red pill or the blue pill? Red pill. Red pill, okay, hold that deck, don't open it, just leave it just like that. Can I, could I have your hand up, like this? Um, all right, I'm gonna show you two things. Two things you need to know about a sealed deck. First is the red tape that goes all the way around the front, all the way around the back, like a cigarette pack, right? And the second is the seal, that's a seal. 
If that's not been tampered with, you know it's not been opened. Uh, hold your hand up, please. Just leave it like that. Put your other hand just on top of it. Leave it like that. You guys good friends? The best, right? Best friends ever. Okay, awesome. Um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this deck from you. And I'm just going to... Because I want this to be completely fair. Okay? I want you to choose any card. And literally, I don't want to feel like I'm forcing you. Just choose any card whatsoever. You got it? I, now, I don't want to see it. You can show it to the camera. I'm going to turn around. Show it to your friend. It doesn't matter. All right? Just don't show it to me. Done? Okay. Go. That's your, that's your card? Yeah? Just back into the middle. Okay? Now, what I want you to do is I want you to think of your card. And I want you to think of it like, um, almost like, you know when Neo just understood everything and you could like stop bullets? So I want you to imagine that you could take that card. Here, I'll leave this in your hand actually. Hold that. That you can think about your card. Have it disappear from that deck. Lift up and appear inside the sealed deck. How amazing would that be? Okay, ready? Think about it. Can you spread through those cards? Just look for your card. Do you see it? No. Gone, right? Where do you think it is? Slowly, I want you to lift up your hand and turn the deck over. Okay, wait, 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 wait. That is messed up, but let's, t let's take a second here. I mean, for that to have worked legitimately, we'd have to see if this is a blue card. I mean, if that's like a red card, then it doesn't count, right? Can you open the deck? All right, pull it all out, and oh, snap, it's a red card. Wait a second. You know what? For that card, listen, listen, for that card to travel into that box, I mean, physically, for that to be physically possible, it would have to make room, right? So maybe, maybe it pushed the red card out of the deck. So maybe, maybe that card is inside. Yeah, open it up. Go ahead and rip the sticker. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. It was like ad cards, yeah? Yours was the nine of spades, correct? Yeah. The nine of spades. So go, go see the nine of spades. They're all in order. Whoa. Right there, no, right beside. Five, six, seven, eight. Nine of spades. Thank you, absolutely. Thanks for your time, girls. Do you ever walk into a store and pay for something and have the exact amount of change on you? Has that ever happened to you? Really? It happens to me every day. Absolutely. Name a number between zero and a hundred, any number, off the top of your head. 72. Is there any reason you named 72? It's not like a year someone was born in that you know or anything? Okay, not a favorite number by far. Maybe. Okay, check this out. I want you to reach into my pocket. I have a bit of change in there. Just go ahead and reach in the pocket. Yep, yep, absolutely. You can leave the roll of quarters there. Bad joke. I suck at it. Okay, so count it out. How much I got? 71. What'd you say? Oh, that's not bad. One off. Okay, hold on. Come here. Hold your hands out like this. You know how hard it is to get pennies nowadays? Well, hold your hands out like this, like this, Jen. Yeah, like this, and concentrate right here. Concentrate here. You, get, you getting this, Brian? Check this out. <laughs> Where do you get pennies? 72. Out of 72. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> Sick. Love it. Can I, can I see your glasses? Is that cool? Yeah. All right. These look these look like genuine glasses. These are these are really nice. You bail off of these? These are a bit loose, eh? Oh, bro. Sorry. Here. Good as new. I wasn't sure because I trusted you, but at the same time, I'm like, I really hope, Motherfucker. I really hope he knows what he's doing. That's good. One of the things I love about street magic is not knowing what's going to happen. I think, I mean, I have an idea of what's going to happen or how I'd like it to happen, um, but you never know what's going to happen, who's going to who's going to react, um, what are they going to say, you know, there's other people who are going to see this, who are going to want to participate, so you got to think on your feet constantly.
taking people by surprise, off guard completely, who were who are just going about their mundane business in their in their normal ass life, and they just they don't expect it, and it's and it's a, it's a fun thing to be able to give to people. And at the same time, you know, it makes me feel kind of good to uh, to be able to bring that to somebody who wasn't expecting it necessarily. Aha! Yeah, that's pretty cool, man. All right, let me get rid of that. And that. And that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, I gotta imagine, especially when you're talking about, like, um, the uh, magic being a bigger thing on, um, YouTube than, uh, Twitch, um, what I was thinking about in watching that was, uh, I bet you could... I bet you could do it on Twitch if the goal was to present a kind of street magic like that in a, a format that hasn't necessarily been done yet. Like, I mean, I've seen that quite a few times. <laughs> um... you know, in different formats on YouTube and things like that, where basically, you know, he goes out and does all this street magic and they're recording, you know, bits and pieces and then taking it into the edited room and chopping out all the, maybe the slow parts or something, you know, that doesn't quite work and then uploading it to YouTube. But I bet if you practiced enough, you could take, you know, your phone out and do a live Twitch stream doing street magic like that. It might work. It might work, or you could at least do, you know, what he's doing and go and do the street magic and record it and then, you know, take it in the editing room and then upload it to YouTube. You're right, that that aspect of it is probably more uh, YouTube-ish. Uh, but I think you could do live streams like that on Twitch if you had enough planning put into it. Wow. We'll see what it is. Okay, sorry. Let me put it right, uh, right in there. Somewhere. There we go. Hello, oh brother of mine. No, the fire is not peeing. But welcome. Hello. Is that better? Sound wise, something like that, maybe. There we go. Uh, there, there's more aspects to OBS of. Uh, monitoring sound and um, I haven't fully explored them yet but I've got a much better handle on it than even two months ago so yes no Clive is dead Clive doesn't exist anymore wow 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 anyway we're just chatting. An actual just chatting stream. There's not much else going on. We, we just got finished uh, watching a little bit of magic that uh, Slight recommended. 
Clive. What's the other, uh, Clive Barker? That's the other Clive. And, uh, we didn't see any of him this Halloween. I gotta maybe add him into the repertoire. See what's happening. Anyway. Uh, probably going to wrap up in about 15 minutes. I, I think any of these fireside chats that I do in the future, I'm not going to want to go much beyond an hour uh, to an hour and a half. Oh, there, hold on. i got to do what the masses are requesting of me. Hold on. Oh, I got it. Let's see. There we go. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> And that's why it's only 500. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the uh, yeah, there you go. Quick, quick costume change. Uh, the the sound alerts are all, should all be active. Mm -hmm. Let me see here. And mm -hmm. oh, there we go. Sound alerts are active, uh, notifications are active for, like, new followers, hosting, um, subscriptions, and that sort of thing. It's not coming through at all. I mean, it's coming through. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, well let's uh, let's get that down there. Let's see if we can figure that out. There's that. I wonder. I wonder if I have to have another source here. Let me like it's coming through on my end. So we got that. Hi, Taylor. You look like my brother, at least in chat. Why didn't that work? Hmm. Oh, there it is. It's just delayed. Can you hear that one? Can you hear the bell tolling? Here, let me mute that for a second here. One more time. Did 
Did you hear that bell tolling? If not, I gotta figure out uh, how that's supposed to work because I followed all the instructions of getting the sound alerts into the stream uh, thing. You didn't hear it. Ah, ah, boo, hiss. All right. I ain't heard shit. Hmm. Well, the extension works, the actual alert works, but we don't have sound. That's interesting. That's interesting. Install the extension. Got that. Master volume is up. That's enabled. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. Well, I expect that uh, due to this unforeseen occurrence, you're all going to unsubscribe and unmod and uh, leave and never come back. Isn't that what people do? Joel says check each individual sound alert to see if they're on. Yeah, we could do that. All right, so... Did you all hear that? <laughs> I don't want to go through them one by one. Hmm. Oh, and on life. <laughs> oh, if, if I wasn't so fat, I would run around like a chicken with its head cut off. How's that? Um... Let's see here. Well, if y'all didn't hear that, then let's try something completely different. Let's put in this. And let's see. Let's turn this off. there and now let's try this great googly moogly there did you get the, the, the googly moogly good lord please put that thing back in your pants. Oh, there we go. Here, here's your jackass. You're a jackass. And, 
Yeah, let's put this. Hey, hands off the merchandise, you creep. Okay. Well, that's not, uh, I didn't want to do that. Because that makes things a little more complicated. I'm going to see if I can find a workaround, but at least I know. <sighs> Even though I had the browser uh, on the screen, it wasn't providing sound. It's trying to pull it from the actual sound alerts. So, okay, Slight. Thank you for joining me. Have a couple of bites of charred animal flesh for me. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's see if that works now that I've closed that window. Does it hurt your back to kiss your own ass like that? Ah, it does. Okay. So, that's how that works. I'm going to have to see if I can find a better workaround instead of having that as a source because that's going to complicate things, I think, in certain regards. But we'll see what's going on. Anyway, um, yeah, we're going to wrap up here, I think. So thank you all for joining me. Uh, everybody can now go to Slight's house because they have dinner. Uh, steak, apparently, and um, he said he was going to provide dinner for the whole class, but uh, you, you got to go over there and see if he actually does it. I don't know for sure. Anyway, uh, let's see here, and let's find somebody to raid in the meantime. Mm -hmm. Let's see, we got Fun, we got Tuba. Mm, the game room might be starting here in a minute. Yeah, they should be, actually. So let, we'll wait a couple of minutes and see if the game room is there, unless there's somebody else has a suggestion. Tangled Cord, Unsummoned Skull, Joho. Is doing some Magic the Gathering. Uh, Rageful Riot is playing Dead by Daylight. Mr. Wrong with some Hollow Knight. A lot of good people streaming here. The Joho. Huh? Okay, we'll go see the Jojo. Wait. Mr. Wrong instead, I'm assuming. <laughs> so yeah, let's go raid everybody at the same time. Let's see here. <laughs> Slight, did you save me from st uh, some steak? Uh, now the dinner is over. Let's see here. Tuba. Uh, well, we'll go see Tuba then. Mm -hmm. that right? Okay, there we go. All right, thank you all for joining me, and uh, before we get going here, let's do um, some coming attractions. To do Tomorrow night, at dead of night, with Watch Whitney on the Watch Whitney channel, 7 p.m., and then the third episode of Arcade... Nostalgia Memories podcast on Sunday, new time, 5 p.m. with the beautiful Steph Babies, will be our guest that night. And finally, uh, a little bit later that evening at 8 p.m., Cage and Short and Sweet are going to begin Zelda 2. And you can check that out at Legion Cage's channel. And it will be fun. So, thank you very much. Adios. Say hi to Tuba. Get your uh, emotes out. Torquing Kermits or Ben Stein or your own. Uh, that's, that's perfectly good. Whatever you like to use. And we'll see you later. Bye-bye.